Welcome, everybody. For those of you who were here yesterday, we had just a wonderful time together. So thank you for coming. And for those who are new to this, I welcome you. And my name is Mark Izu, and I'd like to introduce you to the person who started this whole project, Brenda Wangaoki. Thank you, honey. <laughs> welcome. Some of you might just be joining us and some of you are coming back. Welcome you, welcome to you all. I just want to let you know that um, we will not be recording any of the small groups. So where that's the sacred space. So have no fear there. And we'll start out this morning by um, going, well, I just wanted to share with you that Mark and I like to go to church and temple and synagogue. And <laughs> we like to go anywhere that you can actually find the source of all. And we go to um, Christian church at least once a year at Christmas. And what we do, we, we used to like to go to um, Reverend Yoshi's church. And I say used to because he just retired. They're so sad. And one of the reasons that we love going to Reverend Yoshi's church is the music is incredible. He's got one of the most amazing, well, one of the major funk bands in the city is who he has in his church. And then the message is, you know, at this time of the religious right and just Christian hate, it's unbelievable. And Reverend Yoshi's always held it down for what I think is the true teaching of Christ. And he's, he's one of old school liberation theology. You know, he's been an activist all of his life. And he's one of those people who believes this. And I actually don't really know the Bible, but this is one thing that I really hope that a lot of the Christians who are um, um, talking about social justice, you know, I, I hope they're more uh, vociferous because we need to hear those voices. Uh, I love this line. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. For now, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Reverend Michael Yoshi. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you and Mark for inviting me to be part of this very, very unique uh, virtual gathering of the extended family tribes of the Japanese American diaspora. And uh, it's really humbling to be among such esteemed artists and musicians here today. Um, I've been asked as a Christian pastor to provide a blessing for today's event on the theme of joy. And as we prepare for that blessing, I would like to invoke the presence of my grandparents on both sides of my family. Uh, my virtual backdrop is actually a photo of the cemetery where both sets of my grandparents are buried. And on my mother's side, the Sakamoto family were farmers in Fresno, California, and they lost their farm when they were sent to Jerome, Arkansas, Arkansas during the wartime. On my father's side, the Yoshi family had a restaurant in Oakland, California. They were sent to Topaz, Utah during the war and lost their restaurant. For me, with the passage of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, that was a very influential factor in always informing what we did with the struggles of other people who were caught in the toxic triangle of war, racism, and politics. And to be absolutely honest with you, when we had our first orientation for this gathering over a week ago or so, I felt 
a lot of ambiguity about sharing a blessing of joy, because at that time we were in the height of the fighting between Gaza and Israel, which ended up taking over 260 Palestinian lives, many of them children and mothers and fathers, 12 Israelis and two children uh, were also killed as well. And the disproportionality of the casualties reflects the reality of Israeli military power that's funded by our US taxpayer money to the tune of $3.8 billion a year. And the military occupation of Palestine and the settler colonial project annexing Palestinian land is the backdrop to all the violent exchanges that go on. And even with the ceasefire, these issues remain unresolved. I wanna do a just quick screen share and evoke the presence of my grandmother with us today because I always reflect upon things and think about her. She was a joyful person who had a great deal of faith. She died when I was in seminary studying theology, but she was the one who blessed my path and was so happy I found my way. And I always remember her home being a bustling place of activity where you'd see people from all over the world coming to visit and places where it was evident that she lived the ethic of uh, befriending strangers. And there were always people who were, had been strangers who had become friends to her and to our family. And this is extended into ministry that I shared when we began a, a partnership uh, with uh, the village of Wadi Fukin, which is in the West Bank of uh, the uh, occupied Palestinian territories. And in this village, we began to share the partnership and have trips to the village in which we would be exposed to things that our media doesn't cover. The detail, details of the Israeli military occupation of Palestine, the expansion of Israeli settlements, which are legal by international law, land confiscation orders, taking over village land, destruction of fruit trees and natural habitat in the village. And the village is Muslim, all Muslim. And so our partnership became a really unique Muslim Christian partnership that we could speak of. And after taking trips for several years, on one of the occasions, Yusuf Manastra here in the center of this photo, sat me down at his son's place, Atta on the right, and took off his cloak. It's called an abaya, a very meaningful garment. And he put it on me embraced me and we sat down for a few moments of just silent, joyful, in many respects, moment of friendship. And as I asked family about what this meant, his son told me that through the trust that we had developed and the friendships, we were now part of extended family. And so, we as community became family to them and they to us. Yusuf died in 2017 and we set up a memorial fund so that we can have people travel there and people travel to here so that we can appreciate and understand the humanity of Palestinians and also the struggles that they go through in their lives. As we share this time of blessing for this morning, I want to invite each and every one of us to close our eyes if you wish, keep them open if you want, but close our eyes and invoke the presence of your ancestors who have given you life in this world, continue to guide you. and also evoke the presence of ancestors of your extended families and extended communities of solidarity who also are with us on this day, recognizing the importance of crossing those boundaries. I invite us to call upon the names of 
the sacred persons in our spiritual traditions. For me, it is Jesus, the liberator, the healer, the redeemer. For you, it may be other names of the sacred to allow their presence to be with us, to bless us on this day for all that is to take place. May we breathe in the breath of life that we can give gratitude for the gift of a new day of life on this earth. May we receive spiritual inspiration that allows us to share the joy of friendship and common humanity in the world. <clears throat> even in moments of despair, grief, and sorrow. And may the winds of the Spirit blow upon us from the east and the west and the north and the south, animating our creative expressions today towards the building of beloved community. Amen and Ashe. It's my great privilege to pass this over to our next presenter, Tycho practitioner extraordinaire, teacher, collaborator, composer, community organizer, and founder of Tycho Peace, E.J. Hirabayashi. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, it's like a blessing to be meeting you virtually. People have been telling me I have to meet with you because seven years ago, I went to Palestine um, and we worked with the Palestinian teenagers and taught them a dance that I had created and taiko. And it was there that I saw these young people filling their hearts with a new connection to culture an expansion to meet with the other. And they really enjoyed connecting but it was through this open heart and open mind and desire to connect. And I thank you very much for sharing your experience, um, Michael, thank you. So anyway, I would like to prepare ourselves to arrive to this wonderful event. This event um, for this morning, we are focusing on joy and that joy, sparks from inside ourselves. So I'd like to start with um, feeling ourselves present. And I have to, um, not yet, but I'm gonna have Erin put up a image, but this image that I found online uh, several years ago was created by a uh, artist by the name of Julia Mandala Weaver. And when I saw this image, that was only two inches by two inches on a website. It was so powerful, it jumped off the screen of my computer and I go, that's how I teach. That's what I believe in. It's this infinite download of energy. Energy is what we are here to be able to direct and to create and to send in any direction. Um, this tool, this image, actually I use in my Tycho workshops. Um, it's like a tool to develop our awareness of ourselves, this vessel. It's to stay present, to self-regulate, um, to feel whole, to feel balanced, um, feel connected, know ourselves, love ourselves, and also be empowered. So Erin, can you bring up the ocean of chi? I'd like you to really immerse yourself into this image that you are that empty vessel don't, downloading infinite energy from the universe, infinite energy, energy from Mother Earth and all the energy that surrounds you and you are able to download and direct to create and just imagine 
of where you want to send this energy. And that's how much power we have. It's infinite. So keep this image in your mind throughout the day, because this is what we are here. When you can feel there are no boundaries of what enters into this single vessel, the body, it's like your potential and your imagination really starts to blossom. So keep this image in your mind as I have you. You can either, well, I'd like to invite you to stand up so that you can really feel the energy around you. As you are standing, or if you desire to sit, please be aware of how you're connected to Mother Earth. This is our ultimate mother who always feeds us and that always nourishes us. And it's also with our intention and awareness to know that we are always embraced by her infinite giving. And let that energy come through the bottom of your feet and go through all your body from the soles of your feet up into your torso and explode out of the crown of your head. Allow the infinite energy from the universe to come into the crown of your head and to fill your body all the way connecting to earth. Feel this space that surrounds you 360 all over. Kind of feel like you to move and actually feel what's in front of you, what's above you, what's below you, what is around you. Imagine that you're just playfully playing with this energy, inviting this to come into your body and to send it out into this community that we are sharing together. Let's inhale and exhale. Inhale from the crown of your head, from the cosmos, from the earth. Inhale and exhale. Roll those shoulders back. We're just kind of energizing that body to awake, wake up. Start painting the room as if your arms are like Japanese fude, the brush, the stroke. You're brushing upwards and downwards. The whole room up and down. The other side up and down. Other side up and down. Other side up and down. Embrace the entire space and bring into your heart. Up and bring it into your center. Be aware of the ocean of space, the ocean of chi, the ocean of energy. So this is where everything gets ignited, where our imagination, our emotions, and our connections to each other happen with us. So I'd like to um, explain how this vessel enters joy. Joy is your expression to bring into the world. It's one to love. It is also one to connect when we are not just only in our heads. We can feel our bodies moving, our minds opening, our hearts opening. 
last year in 2020, during the pandemic, composer Byron Aoyang and writer Aaron Jafferis released the activist songbook. Um, it's a collection of compositions that they created that were based on interviews with social activists from diverse communities. This, the activist songbook um, explores how human rights, organizing, um, and music intersect to inspire action and counteract hate and energize movements. So it was an honor to be interviewed by Byron and Aaron uh, to be included into the activist songbook. And our interviewed inspired the creation of a song called There Will Be Joy. I do believe in our interview, I also referred to working with people side by side um, out on the line with a very good friend who is Father John Pedigo here in San Jose. And he says, PJ, that Tycho needs to be out. Like when we are protesting, it's not that we're angry, there should be joy. And this is where the song came from. Um, in synchronicity, this debuted only a few days after the killing of George Floyd. And that from that time on, it's been the growing movement uh, for social and heart reckoning. So keeping in mind of the theme of joy, uh, I would like to have you uh, experience there will be joy. And for us to get up on our feet, <laughs> and as we sing along, there will be a chorus. Um, when we are organizing, there will be joy. Even when we're angry, there will be joy. Our movements are seeding and bursting through the earth, through our bodies, joy, through our bodies, joy. So please join me. I'd like to share with you. There will be joy. Yo!
turning point for me was the anti-war movement. Asian American students took me in. They're righteous and they're loud. I thought, how can they do that? My parents would always tell me that you can't, cannot, can't make any trouble or speak of our internment. Be silent. When I begin to go for them, it is the end. When we're old and Together, we can make a conflict of rhythm, a conflict of tempo. In music, we can be uncivil and then come together, unify. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Please keep the image of the ocean of chi inside this vessel, your body, and uh, spread your energy <laughs> with awareness and intention. Uh, so as I segue into our next guest, I love to introduce to you George Yamasaki Jr. Um, who was playing swing when the music was created. And um, he has served with the city of San Francisco and the Japanese American community as a lawyer, as MC, and as a city commissioner for the past 50 years. It is my joy and my honor to introduce George Yamasaki Jr. But it, it was more than the music. It, it was the people, it was the notion of working together, it was the idea of seeing the audience respond, uh, so many things. In many, many homes was a piano. At the age of six, shortly before the attack on Pearl Harbor, I started the first grade. And at the same time, I went into a piano class, a group class. It was taken as a matter of course. It was part of culture. It was just everyday living. Mark, as he mentioned, brought me in because I play this style out of the 30s. During one of our rehearsals, I just started to fiddle around and play some of my old stuff from the 30s. And Shoko came over and said, oh, that's such happy music. It makes me want to dance. And I said, well, Shoko, in our day, they were called dance bands because that was the purpose of our music, to get people dancing. There were people that would come in in outwardly bad shape. During the course of a performance, they would literally come to life. Music can trigger some sort of memory, especially a pleasant memory, and, and that revitalizes a person. And I, I, it was just gratifying to see 
I had the privilege of accompanying the Chinese Frank Sinatra, uh, Larry Ching of a, a very famous, at the time, nightclub just outside Chinatown called Forbidden City. Every note he played was, at that time, the most important note of his life. It, it was just a joy to hear and to see and to experience. I've met wonderful people through music. I've had great friendships like Mark and Brenda. As far as uh, measuring the happiness I've received uh, doing things, I would have to say that uh, it's a major source. Thank you so much, George. Uh, we're really grateful for you sharing your story with us. And um, I'd love to leave everyone with uh, one or two minutes of words of wisdom from, wisdom from you. Um, you know, what you feel is important in this moment to transmit to the next generations. We had such a wonderful time speaking with you in the creation of that video. And Tashi, what a wonderful, um, dedication to to George's joy in his music. George, would you be able to share a few words with us, please? Sure, I'd love to. Um, if you'll indulge me, I, 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 just a quick disclaimer. Uh, all the video of the, uh, the, the very attractive uh, young children uh, have nothing to do with me. Uh, that must be stock film that uh, uh, was found and, and it's appropriate. But uh, sadly, the old um, eight millimeter uh, and 16 millimeter movies that I had and brought with me from Hawaii that my father uh, shot turned into mush when we opened up the, the uh, can holding all of the, uh, the film, it, it was gone. And that's a great regret to me. But anyway, uh, if you'll indulge me further, um, I would just like to observe that uh, I, I, I I'm awed by the significance of the contributions of the other participants, not myself. Uh, when they create and perform uh, works of art, they are conveying a message. When I played my swing piano, uh, I really have to confess that I was not trying to convey a message because that was not the purpose of what we did when we were actually playing it for the public. We were out to entertain, to bring happiness, joy, want make people want to dance just as Shoko did. And uh, we really didn't have any significant message except to enjoy and to be happy. So I, I feel very, very privileged to be included by Brenda and Mark in this uh, amazing group of participants and uh, but I, I have to, as I say, acknowledge that my contributions, if any, uh, to Mark's performances um, resulted in his 
integrating what I do into the significant messages that he was conveying. So uh, we're, we're, we're strictly uh, there to provide a historical background, like a vintage automobile in a, in a video. Uh, but I enjoy it. And as I say, I, I feel honored to be part of this uh, entire production. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. And I think you fully encompass joy in so many ways. And we're really grateful that, that you share that with us. So thank you again. Um, I, I'm happy now to introduce another person who fully encompasses joy. And I'm so grateful to know. Um, I'm going to be introducing Tracy Kato Kiriyama who I first met in Colorado um, when they came to teach our community how to record and document cultural memories for our loved ones. And um, we've been friends ever since. Um, they're a writer, poet, performer, actor, theater artist, organizer, educator, and producer. Um, and most of all, they're just very committed to the intersection of arts, activism, and healing through uh, creative solidarity work. So. Thank you, Tracy, and we're so happy to have you here with us today. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Courtney, and thank you so much, Brenda and Mark and, and the whole team for bringing this together and bringing all of us together. Um, I, I'm just really full right now. I'm sure that we all feel very, very full. And um, I, I've been thinking a lot throughout this week and especially since last night about the, the shoulders that we stand upon. I really enjoyed us talking about that and sharing that. And, you know, I always think about um, the shoulders here uh, that I stand upon, known and unknown, the people in this space um, who have directly mentored me, people like Novoko, who has been my big sister and teacher for a very long time, but also everybody else that um, I've heard your names, I've wanted to meet with you, I've wanted to connect with you for so long. Um, and, and the people I'm just meeting, you know, I, I stand on all of your shoulders. So I'm so grateful to, to be here. Um, you know, Japanese joy are not two words that I usually really put together, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so I, I loved, I loved being uh, able to think about that and having to think about that. And, you know, I, I think something that I really appreciate is the willingness and the capacity and the intention to reach out and to bring in, to really uh, be grounded in and real about our interconnection. And something I think about um, are, you know, some words from, from Shin Buddhism uh, that I think are, are a kind of a Japanese joy you know, to me when I read them. And I'm gonna read just a few words um, from uh, Taitetsu Uno's uh, River of Fire, River of Water. Um, so he talks about Buddhist ethics um, that I think we can, you know, bring out to, to many other spiritual paths, but how they attempt to maximize personal responsibility and minimize hypocrisy in dealing with difficult issues. The basis for this is the elemental fact of the interdependence and interconnectedness of all life. This means that while we may not be capable of always truly and sincerely loving others, we are always the beneficiaries of the concerns, sacrifices, and goodwill of others. In realizing this, we will want to serve others and serve society to the best of our ability. You know, when I was first coming out with my mom, she said to me, I um, accept, no, no, no. She said, I understand, but I don't accept. And so I said, well, let's let this be the beginning of our conversation on that. Let's let, let's let that be the beginning of our journey in that because I wanna get you to a place where you understand, accept, love, celebrate, amplify, you know what I mean? And it was a long journey and she's awesome with it, you know? <laughs> Um, but it's a journey, right? Um, so I think our journey to joy, our journey to love, our journey to, you know, understand the idea that I was taught a long time ago by a Lakota tribe, right? Oneness, not sameness, right? 
So I don't feel, I don't feel the same as everyone, but I feel so much oneness with all of you. So um, we're gonna now take this time to reflect with each other on all the things that we have been filling up on um, over the past you know, day uh, and, and last night. Um, so we're going to repeat these instructions and bullet points in the chat so that you will have that with you. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into breakout rooms. Um, we're going to try to keep it at three people per room. And we're going to do a little bit of reflection uh, through words, but also with our bodies. Okay, so when you get into your groups, we're just going to think about being filled with the conversations and all the sharing from last night and today and think about how do you feel think about where all of this is actually landing in your body in your mind in your spirit and then i'd like you to think of a pose or a gesture we're going to do a couple poses we're going to do two and then we're going to combine them so i think when we talk about joy we're always gonna be in the midst of difficult times, of hard times. And sometimes it's gonna be very challenging to even say that word. I know it will be for me, or it is for me. Um, but I trust in it. I trust in the need for it. I trust that even when we're going through something at, at some point, someone will crack a joke and we'll laugh and then we'll return to the issue, right? Um, we need it, we need it. So we can't step over it though. We can't ignore it. We have to acknowledge pain, right? We have to confront it. I love confrontation. I'm great with it. And, uh, but I think that it has to be balanced. So first, I wanna just acknowledge that. Like, so I wanna ask you to think of a pose, a gesture, some place on your body where you hold stress, where you hold pain, where you hold trauma. A lot of times for me, my, my pose is here my chest. I hold stress here. Think about that for yourself. Where do you hold it? And where would you place your hands? Where might you hold it? Where would you place your hands? Okay, so for me, it's going to be here today. And then something that I have been taught by Reiki uh, practitioners and masters is that we take that energy and we can flick it away. It's really important that we, we identify our place of stress to be able to take it and flick it away. So that's something that you can practice, that it doesn't stay with you, you can take it. It actually feels really good. I invite you to try that. So wherever you might hold stress, take it and flick it away. So you're gonna think about this. You're gonna think about this position of stress, okay? And then you're gonna let that go. And you're gonna think of a pose or a gesture for how you feel or experience strength, resilience, and or connection. Okay, for me today, it's here. Okay, so here and here. And if I might combine those together, it might be here, okay. So, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go into your rooms. You're gonna talk a little bit about what you've been filling up on. We're only gonna have like 15 minutes, but that's why we're limiting it to three people per room so that you'll have about five minutes each. So I want you to think about like, yeah, just talk through that. Like, well, you know, I usually hold stress here or I feel it here and then just identify it, identify a pose, okay? And then you're gonna think about some position, pose, gesture of strength, resilience, connection, okay? And then you're going to teach it to each other in your group. Don't think too hard. Just think, okay, well, where do I feel it? Where do I feel it? Okay, where do I feel it? You know what I mean? And think of that last piece of connecting those things together and making an offering to your group. Okay? So we'll put this in the chat. I think Courtney's going to put that in the bullet points in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Just pose of stress, pose of strength, and then bring it together as an offering of connection. Okay, bring it together as an offering of connection. Then we're gonna have so much fun because we're gonna come back and we have the most amazing musicians on this call and they're gonna jam. 
and we're going to do call and response. And we're going to start to share those movements and listen and react to the music. And hopefully, if they can see us while they're, they're, they're doing their thing, they can also react to us. And I'm going to talk through a little bit um, as we go through. Are we good? Do you want to try it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, is everybody back? I'm gonna put myself on gallery view. If everybody could put yourself on gallery view, the whole point here is to be able to see each other um, and definitely for the musicians joining in to, to see us. So Asia, Mas, Mark, Kenny, thank you so much. PJ, do you have your instruments? Join in, please. That'd be awesome. Any, any musician, please, 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 please grace us with your musical gifts. So um, ah, my group of three, it was so much fun. We, we went through our gestures. And so um, I, that's what I'm gonna just invite everyone to do, just kind of go through the gestures that you were learning from your group. And then the music is just gonna start and we're gonna react to the music. Music will hopefully react to us too. And we'll just do some call and response for just a, a, a few minutes. Um, and I'm gonna talk us through a couple things as we go, but let's just start. Asia, you wanna, you wanna get us going? And then maybe everyone else can join in. invite you to start mirroring what you see from other people in your gallery view. Collectively, and 
have one last offering to each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was so wonderful. That was so fun. It's got us all going and it reminded us that we're alive. So we're about to go to lunch, but before we do that, I want to introduce probably the most famous Taiko drummer. Wait, I have to just make one more comment on that. That was so amazing. <laughs> I'm just plowing through because I have a script. Tracy, thank you so much. You know, you got not only us all moving, talking to each other, but also all those musicians. And there's so many musicians on this. And I just, I wish I would have told everybody who is on, on here just to unmic yourself and play. There's There were many other musicians too, but the fact that all of you were able to do that on Zoom is incredible. So thank you so much. A ritual live on Zoom is amazing. Okay, now I will introduce Kenny. Just wanted to say that. Uh, okay, so Kenny Endo is probably the world's most famous taiko drummer. But um, he's also one of those people, like um, some of a lot of you out there, who's got a school, and his, his students now are professionals, and they're starting schools. So you know, another one of those people just um, pollinating culture and perpetuating this beautiful energy all over. Kenny schools in Hawaii, and. Um, I want to tell you very quickly, you can read about Kenny in the chat because, you know, he's got this extensive bio, but I just wanted to tell you that personally, I met Kenny when I was 17. <laughs> we were in college together. I met him playing bongos in, in the stairwell. And he had on like this, you know, this handkerchief and he had this really slow draw. And I didn't even know he was Asian because he was, he had that, he was from East Los and he had that kind of drawl, you know, like, orale, just kind of like, so I had no idea it was Asian. It was only when he came to a Asian student meeting that I'm like, Kenny, what are you doing here? That I found out he was Japanese. So Kenny's been my friend since then. And then he was my very first roommate, uh, housemate uh, when I moved to San Francisco. And um, he used to always, you know, there were, th there were three artists in this house, me, Robert Kikuchi, and Goho, and Kenny. And uh, everybody was busy doing their thing. I was a dancer at the time, and, and I forget what we all were doing, but Kenny was always playing drums, and I'd see him play traps, and he'd always be saying, you should come hear my taiko um, shows. And I'm like, in my mind, I didn't know what is taiko. I just knew that Kenny plays drums. Kenny wants me to go see a whole bunch of drummers and I thought, wow, that would be so boring. I could just imagine like, you know, 20 trap drummers in a parking lot all playing and it just didn't seem very exciting. So when I finally went to one of Kenny's gigs, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And that's my very first time I ever heard Taiko. So um, after Kenny plays, we're gonna have lunch. You can have it on your own or you can keep your windows open and we can talk to each other. So now, Sensei Kenyendo. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, I, I wanna thank uh, Mark and Brenda for uh, hosting this event. It's a really uh, great thing to bring people together like this. And, um, you know, here in Hawaii, we have uh, the the luxury of the Asians being the majority, um, and uh, there's a lot of things Asians are experiencing on the mainland that we don't experience. But at the same time, uh, as we learned from Noelani uh, yesterday, there's an ongoing struggle for the Native Hawaiians to control their land, their culture, um, their future, and um, so. 
<clears throat> I'm always aware of that, especially when I perform in Hawaii. Um, so this instrument is it's not what you know as a typical taiko. This is called a kotsuzumi from the classical theater, uh, both no and kabuki. And um, the the teacher I got to study with, he was a ningen kokuhoe, a, a national living treasure. And when he played, uh, it was pretty amazing. You can almost visualize the sound coming out, and he had a really deep voice. So I'm going to be doing some of we, we call it kakegoi. It's using the voice as well as playing the drum. And um, in the old days when this music was beginning, these were signals to each other when to begin, speed up, slow down, or end. It gradually became part of the music. So when I did this training in Japan, we had to learn how to, um, to play the instrument and put it together, but also to develop the voice. So I'm just going to play a little kotsuzumi for you. Thank you. 